Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for taking your busy time. There's so many different things to see and do here. But, but I am pleased that you've come to um, listen about immunisation because I think um, when you're thinking about starting a family, it's really important to think about what... It's a, it's a big investment emotionally. We do... We try really hard. And immunisation is one of the best things you can do for your children. OK? It's... Some people are unaware of this, but actually immunisation has saved more lives than any other medical advance ever. Includes antibiotics, surgery, um, uh, drugs for blood pressure and cholesterol. It, it saves more lives because most, and most, of the, most of the lives it saves are of young babies. So immunisation is really important. Now, what we've realised actually is you need to think about protecting your baby and yourself even before you're getting pregnant. So it's, it's never too early to start to thinking about immunisation. We know that as a, as a mother, it's really important that you don't get rubella during pregnancy, for instance. Rubella is a very serious illness if you're pregnant because it affects the baby and it can result in uh, birth defects that affects hearing, the heart, the baby's brain. And, and fortunately in Australia, we have now eradicated rubella in children being born with rubella that they've caught from their mums during pregnancy. So that's been a really important reason to think about making sure that you're protected against rubella before you um, have your baby. Now, in fact, all good doctors and obstetricians will make sure that you're actually protected against rubella before it's one of those blood tests that you have to have. Um, and uh, it's really important. Unfortunately, we've stopped rubella circulating in Australia. The other thing to important that it's middle of winter, although it's pretty warm in Perth today. Actually, influenza is a really bad thing if you're pregnant. When we had the swine flu pandemic, uh, we, we actually found that pregnant mums were one of the most severely affected groups by the, um, the swine flu vaccination. And a lot of mums uh, ended up in ICU. And, and in some states, they actually had, um, had to ship patients from one state to another because they didn't have enough intensive care beds to fit in the pregnant mums who had flu. So actually flu is really serious um, problem when, when you're pregnant. Who's had their flu vaccine this year? Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. One of, the, one of the interesting things, actually, we now know that actually having the flu vaccine when you're pregnant actually also protects the babies. So, so um, in the first six months of life, you give your antibodies that you have to your baby and protects them from those very early infections. And one of the things we, we now worked out that actually having the flu vaccine when you're pregnancy looks as though it protects the babies. And we're actually doing a large study across Australia now to show just how well and how long that protection lasts for. So that's really important. So not only do you pre protect yourself with flu vaccine, you can also protect your baby. Now, who's heard of whooping cough? Has everyone heard of whooping cough? Whooping cough is a really, if, if, I, if, if you guys get whooping cough, it's really unpleasant. You um, have it for a couple of weeks, a cough, might go on for a month or two, you don't sleep so well, you don't, you don't feel, feel particularly unwell apart from this really annoying cough that goes on for weeks and weeks. The most serious um, problem about whooping cough is in young babies under two months. So they're actually too young to get their whooping cough vaccinations that start at around six to eight weeks, um, but they... Uh, get very unwell and unfortunately are often hospitalised and sometimes, in fact, we have every year a couple of deaths from whooping cough. Well, we've just um, released the, the uh, very large study of 70% of the uh, pregnant mums in England got vaccinated with, against whooping cough during the pregnancy. We also call it pertussis. And they found that it was highly effective at preventing um, whooping cough in the first two months of life. So it, it needs to be given just in that last stage of pregnancy. So in the last sort of ideally in the last 12 weeks, four weeks is probably about ideal. So that's something that you should talk about with your obstetrician and your GPs to um, think about having the whooping cough vaccine during your pregnancy. Um, so um, we've talked about what you can do to protect yourself and protect your baby. And I think we're going to hear a lot more about vaccinating pregnant mums to protect their babies against a whole range of disease over the next 10 years. Okay, so... Um, so this is the other thing I wanted to talk about was the other way you can protect your baby with that, even before they've had any vaccines is what we call cocooning. So this is making sure that a family member doesn't give the vaccine preventable disease to the baby. We know that young children are particularly um, prone to spreading pertussis to their babies. Um, 
if um, your dads haven't had a whooping cough booster for, for 10 years, then they can also have a whooping cough booster and not make sure that they don't bring um, uh, the, the, the pertussis into the family. Um, so it's really important we make sure all the kids are up to date and that um, um, uh, dads and mums and um, grandparents as well, if they're going to be looking after the children. So, so I think this is a, another good way that we can sort of create a, a protective um, cocoon around the babies. Okay, so you've got this newborn baby. It's been a lot of work. You've got through the um, delivery. Um, now, the first thing, first immunisation we start to talk to you about is actually against hepatitis B. A lot of people haven't heard about hepatitis B. It's, it's a relatively uncommon disease. The problem is if you catch it when you're a baby, you actually have it lifelong. And in a lot of countries where they haven't had hepatitis B programs, actually it's a really important cause of liver cancer when you get older. So you actually continue to carry this infection throughout life if you acquire it very young. So it's, and it's very important that um, uh, mums know that they're immune against the hepatitis B because they don't, they, if they are infected, then there's uh, special treatments you can give immediately after birth. But we also start our hepatitis B vaccinations just after the um, baby's born. So usually before you go home from hospital. Now, it's not compulsory. Some people are still not sure about it at that stage. That's okay, but it is part, because it's part of the infant immunisations that we receive as well. So the next thing is the two-month immunisations is generally when people start it. Well, in fact, you can start it at six weeks. So if you're going to see your GP or um, a paediatrician for the six-week baby check, then you can start your routine um, baby vaccines then. And that gives them the earliest chance of getting protected against um, the, the sick all the diseases we protect against. And in fact, we protect against quite a few now. Um, we have a six-in-one vaccine. So this is a vaccine that um, protects against six very common diseases. We've listed some of them here, the whooping cough. Pneumococcus, what does that mean? Well, actually, it's the most common cause of pneumonia in young children, responsible for more deaths worldwide um, than almost any other infection, particularly in children under five. Children in Australia don't tend to die of pneumonia, but you get sick, you need antibiotics. And if you're young, so under two years of age, you usually have to go into hospital to have treatment. It's also a really common cause of ear infections. So it's one of the most common um, reasons why children will need antibiotics or is actually for ear infections. And having the pneumococcal vaccine, which you get with your routine vaccinations at sort of two, four and six months, um, is the best way to protect your babies against it. And now we protect against the 13 most common strains of that particular bug. Hib doesn't mean much to many people, but when I started my training in paediatrics, this was the most common cause of meningitis um, in young babies and also caused this thing called epiglottitis where they would get this infection in the back of their throat and they would find it, and it would swell up and they would find it really difficult to, bl uh, to breathe. And they'd actually have to get admitted to um, intensive care um, and get treated with antibiotics until they got over it. We don't see this disease anymore. We've eliminated it from Australia by vaccination. And this, is a really, this has been a major uh, improvement in the health of our children. And, and this is one of the advantages. And in fact, even the kids aren't vaccinated aren't getting hip disease because we have herd immunity. Do people understand what herd immunity is? That means if you get enough people vaccinated and the critical figure is about 90%, then the disease stops spreading in the community. So even those people who aren't vaccinated are protected. So that's something that... Um, that the whole, that's a benefit for the whole community from you getting yourself and your children immunised. And finally, rotavirus. Well, what does that mean? Well, this is the most common cause of gastro. So uh, profuse vomiting, diarrhoea um, uh, that lasts for between two and seven days. Sometimes the diarrhoea can go on for weeks if the kids get lactose intolerant afterwards. Um, uh, again, without medical treatment, a very serious disease causes deaths in developing countries. But in Australia, um, used to cause 10,000 hospitalisations a year due to rotavirus. We now have a vaccine. It's an oral vaccine. It's a, a weakened virus that you take orally. So it's the drops that you get when you take your um, baby. You get it at two, four and six months of age. And that's decreased by 70% the number of hospitalisations already from rotavirus. And we think it'll get better because we'll get herd immunity. And then the, kid, the toddlers in daycare will stop bringing it back home to the small babies who, who get who get most unwell. So, so, so that's another really important disease. Things like polio we've eliminated from Australia but we still need to vaccinate because people might come in from countries um, such as Pakistan, Afghanistan, parts of Africa where there still are a few pockets of polio. Um, and we, we've talked about the hepatitis B. 
So, so you need three doses. Really important you get them on time. Don't be late. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, oh, he's got a bit of a cold. Maybe, maybe I'll wait till that runny nose gets better. Don't worry about it. When they're due for their vaccinations, you'll get a reminder. Make sure you take them to um, your GP, okay? It's, uh, there's almost, there's very few what we call contraindications, so reason why you can't be vaccinated um, when you're a young child. So that's something that's really important to think about. Don't worry about a runny nose. Take them to the doctor. If they don't think it's safe, they won't vaccinate them. But say, no, look, I want to have these vaccines. I want to be protected. Because generally for a lot of these diseases, and particularly whooping cough, you actually need two doses to be to get a good, a high level of protection. Um, and the third dose will give you that long-term immunity. So, so that's really important. So vaccinating your babies on time is the most important thing you can do. You wouldn't think about not putting them in a car seat, would you? you know? This is an insurance policy against serious diseases. So, so, so really have a think about that. Okay, so you, you've, you've got through the colic, you've got through the sort of teething two to six months, they're starting to walk, 12 months of age, starting to say, mama, dada, uh, 12 months, birthday, have all the family around, all the friends, great celebration. Don't forget their immunisations, okay? And this is when we start to give some of the vaccines that we can't give earlier because you still have antibodies against those. And so measles, mumps and rubella is one of those. So you're... You have been exposed to measles either through vaccination or if you're older like me, you have had it as an infection. Um, and you pass on those protective antibodies that last for that first six to nine months. So, so measles, again, this is a disease we just don't see in Australia. If you, if you want to um, see measles, you need to go to developing countries where only about half the kids get vaccinated against measles. And it's actually a really serious infection causes high fevers, a rash, a cough, um, sometimes diarrhoea, um, and generally the children run well for about a week or two. So, so, so it is a real, um, a real problem. It's not just a temperature in a couple of spots and you get better. And, and the um, other problem is that you can then get other infections on top of it, such as pneumonia, as a complication. And in fact, that's what causes most of the deaths. Um, think about uh, uh, mumps, again, a nasty illness, swelling of the throat, um, uh, sometimes cause a viral meningitis. We've talked about rubella. Chickenpox. Okay, everyone should have chickenpox. We used to think about chickenpox parties. Actually, chickenpox causes about 70 children in WA to be admitted to hospital each year um, because you get secondary infections on top of it. Um, and then finally, before the kids go to school, get them off your hands for a little while at least. Uh, you need the booster of whooping cough because they're going to come into contact with many more children. So these are all things you can do. Right? And this is particularly important if your children are in daycare, okay? Daycare doubles your risk of having all these infections that we've talked about today. Okay, so immunisation is fantastic. Is there any problems? Well, actually, what you're trying to do is you're, you're getting the immune system to switch itself on okay, and develop protective antibodies and um, immune cells against the diseases we're trying to prevent. Well, actually, to do that, you, the, the, the immune system has to think it's fighting an infection. So you do get a little bit of a fever. Usually it's only in about one in ten children. Maybe about one in five will be grisly, have a bit of redness and swelling, and that's good because that means the immune system's starting to work and you're making those protective antibodies. Um, and, and generally, uh, the kids are a little bit uncomfortable. Well, that's okay. No worse than teething. They can have some Panadol. You don't have to give it before the immunisations. Um, you can give it afterwards. It'll still work. And generally, two days later, they're fine. If they're not fine two, day, two days later, it wasn't due to the vaccines. It was a cold that they've picked up at the time. So you're vaccinating somebody at this time of year. There's lots of viruses circulating. That's by far the most common uh, reason that they will be um, uh, unwell. So, so I think hopefully today, um, and, and importantly in WA, we now do a really good effort at making sure that anyone who has any problems with vaccinations can report it so that we can provide those parents with advice um, what we do next time. And, and I can tell you, I see a lot of these children, 95% of them it was something else. It wasn't the vaccine that caused the problem they thought it might have. Um, so, so be reassured, the vaccines are well tested, they're safe, we continually monitor how well they work and how safe they are, and if there's any problems, then, then we don't uh, give them. So thank you for your attention today. I've got a few minutes, hopefully, um, to answer any questions that people might have. There's often lots of questions people might have. Um, no question is uh, stupid, so uh, over to you guys. Thank you.
Any questions? No. Yeah, sure. What are the chances of complications that you see on the news that people are anti-immunisation because, you know, they've heard things? Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and look, you know, I think most people will have heard about a little baby, Saba, who had a febrile convulsion after a, a flu vaccine that was, has subsequently been withdrawn. Um, that's... Of all the... So, so it is possible that there might be a really rare, serious side effect I've never seen anything like that particular case in 20 years as a paediatrician. What I have seen is, is hundreds of cases of children in intensive care, parents speaking to me, why, haven't, why couldn't we have a vaccine for this particular disease or why, just why didn't I get them vaccinated? Um, so this, this is a, um, a balance, I guess, of what's the risk and what's the benefit. For a lot of things in life, giving antibiotics for a lot of our infections in fact, most of the time we'd probably get over it. So the, the benefit of getting the antibiotics is relatively small and the risk of something like diarrhoea is much, is much greater. But we don't, if the doctors think it's the thing to do, we'll do it. Uh, Immunisation is so far in terms of benefit that um, it, it's a bit like having a swimming pool. Okay? Children die of drowning in a swimming pool and we do all we can to make sure they don't, but we understand the benefits that they get from it. So, so I think it's similar with immunisation. What I can say is that... Um, those episodes are incredibly rare, whereas the complications and the li lifelong complications or unfortunately deaths from immunisation still occur. So, so that would be my answer to that question. Um, and uh, having spoken to people um, about these sorts of things, that's the message they'd want to get across. Don't take the risk. You know, we have insurance for our cars, for our house burning down. This is the insurance policy for your children to stop them getting serious infections. So I would um, recommend to you that uh, you get them vaccinated. And, and I think, to be honest, we want to improve the quality of the information we give to people, particularly when you're pregnant, you're just about to have the baby. You know, has your midwives talked to you about immunisation in your antenatal classes or your GPs? Show of hands. Okay, so that's, that, that's about two out of ten. That's not good. So we want to do something about that. But I think hopefully you, uh, you people who've come today will um, be able to spread the message to your friends when you're having your um, play groups or pre-pregnancy baby showers and so on. So thank you for your attention today.